praise coming upon us right now. It's a, a time of prayer. Let's do something different right now. Let's, let's open up the altar right now for prayer. I'm going to ask you to rise this morning. Let us rise from where you're at. And I just sense that a lot of us need to come to the Lord right now. Come to our knees before the Lord and do business with the Lord. You know, God doesn't, come, doesn't call us to come to church to receive. He calls us to come and worship. And so this morning, the invitation is come forth and worship this morning. The altar is open. I'm going to ask you to come out of your pews this morning. Come forth. Come forth. You know who you are. God has been tugging at your heart this morning. God has been calling you by name. God has been saying, come forth, my child. Trust in me. I'm calling you out into the waters. That's what he's saying right now. God desires for you to put your full faith and trust in him this morning. And he wants to show you. He wants to reveal himself to you more and more every day. You just need to trust him. God desires to pull back that veil. You know, when Jesus died on the cross... And when he said it is finished and gave up his spirit, the Bible says that the veil in front of the place of the, called the Holy Holies was torn in half. It was rent in two. You know what that means? That means that whosoever may come needs to come. Whosoever desires to go into the, into the presence of the living God can, go so, can do so freely. We have that liberty. We can go in and out of God's presence. And so if God is calling you this morning, come forth. Come forth. Don't put it off anymore. Take that leap of faith. Go out on a limb for the Lord. You tell the Lord what you need. And he'll tell you what the solution is. You know what the solution is? He'll tell you, it's me. All you need in your life is me. You just need to open your heart and let me in. That's what Jesus is saying this morning. He desires to fix what is broken. He's, he desires to make straight what is crooked. He desires to pour his spirit upon you this morning. And to bring healing into your life. What is it that you need? What is it that you need? You may think you know what you need. But only God knows what you truly need. And so this morning I invite you. Open your hearts to the Lord. Receive the message today. You know why? Because it's not my message. It's a message that's already in the Bible. My job is just to go forth, look for it, and, and, and read it to you all. That's what I'm going to do this morning. I'm going to share a message that's in the Bible. And what you're going to receive this morning is exactly what you need. So this morning, open your hearts up to the Lord. Receive Jesus into your heart and you cry out to him. Call upon the name of the Lord. He'll not leave you hanging. That is the guarantee. That is the guarantee. Let us all bow our heads this morning and pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name this morning. We thank you, Father God, that we can put our full weight and trust in you. Oh, Lord, you loved us so much. That you gave us your only begotten son who came to this, to this earth and on the cross, he suffered for us. He was on that cross for six hours with our name in his mind. He died for us. You have proven to us how much you love us. How far you're willing to go for us. And Lord, we are people who need you. That's how we sum this up. We just need you. We need more of you and less of us. Let us be like John the Baptist who said, I must decrease that you may increase. Help us this morning, Father God, to decrease that Jesus may increase in our lives. Oh, Father, we bless you. We ask that you forgive us for our sins and trespasses, for those rebellious lives that we've been living. We ask that you forgive us, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, dear God, this morning. Help us to be a living testimony to this world of the grace, the power, the mercy that can only be found in you. Oh, Lord, we bless your holy name and we thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Take me deeper. Lord of God, amen. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Lord. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters.
seated. For those of you that came forth and boldly proclaim your need, I congratulate you. For those of you that did it, we're going to get another chance to do so when we're done with the service. So your, your chances aren't up. Your chances aren't up. This morning, we're going to do business with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to read to you this morning out of the gospel of John chapter 2, chapter 2 verses 1 through 11. And the Bible says this, it says, On the third day a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. And nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. And so Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with the water, so they filled them to the brim. And then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. And they did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. And he did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best till now. This is the first of his miraculous signs that Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. Amen and amen. This morning, I'd like to talk about going out on a limb. Everyone here familiar with that term? Going out on a limb? Raise your hands if you're familiar with it. Majority of us are, right? What does it mean to go out on a limb? It it basically means to put your faith and trust in something. Uh, You believe in something or somebody to such a degree that you're willing to bet everything that you have. You're willing to go out on a limb for this individual or this thing, knowing that you'll not be left hanging. I remember when one of the first times I was called to go out on a limb, and it was with my cousin, Armando Martinez Jr., Mandy. We called him Mandy. We were up in Minnesota working the fields. Uh, we were too young to go to work still. Uh, we, were, uh, we were in migrant school, and so we were at the swimming pool. And I remember that Mandy, Mandy came up to me, and he said, Hey, Manuel, uh, man, when is it that you're going to learn how to swim? Because I was in the three-feet uh, section of the kiddie pool, right? I was swimming in a three-feet se- three section, and, and so I told him, man, what are you talking about? I know how to swim. So you don't know how to swim. I see your feet touching the water. He said, why don't you come to the, to the deep side? Come to where the big boys are at, to the 12 feet. He was at the 12 feet, jumping off the diving board and so forth. And, and I wanted to do that, but I was just too scared, and I didn't know how to swim. And so he says, look, do this. Go up to the diving board. I'll be waiting in the middle, and when you jump, if you start drowning, I'll get you. Don't worry about it. You can trust me. I said, okay, you know what? He's my cousin, Mandy. I, you know, he's not going to let me drown. He loves me, or at least I thought. So I go, up to the, <laughs> I go up to the diving board, and so I'm looking down, and he says, uh, go ahead, jump, but don't look down. Keep looking straight. I said, okay, because I was losing my nerve looking down. So finally I jump, land in the water, and it seemed like I never quit sinking. I just kept going and going and going, and finally I popped up, and so I'm struggling, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to drown because my cousin Mondi's got my back. He's asked me to go out on the limb. Mondi! And you know what he said? He said, hey, you're on your own, buddy. You're on your own. Learn how to swim or drown. Which one is it? <laughs> <clears throat> and so on that very important day, I learned how to swim, right? It, 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 it's a milestone in my life because I can point that back to that day and say, that's when I learned how to swim. I learned how to doggy paddle first, and I still, that's all I can do still. I'm not like Morgan Parker or Jessica Rodriguez. I'm, you know, I don't break records, but I can doggy paddle. And so I doggy paddled to the side of the, the, side of the pool, and 
having learned how to swim, the other thing I learned is never trust my cousin Mandy. <laughs> never trust him. Like, that guy will leave you hanging. And so <clears throat> in today's story, we read a story about, about uh, a, a certain individual by the name of Mary. Mary is the mother of, jo- uh, the mother of Jesus. And so in, in certain areas, especially here in this region, Mary is exalted as deity, as almost the same level of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But Mary is not such an individual. Mary is not deity. Mary is, was flesh and blood, just like you and I. Uh, Mary was a sinful person, just like you and I. We've all committed sin. The Bible says that, no, that, that uh, it says, uh, for all have sinned. There's no one righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so Mary falls under that category as well, just like you and I. Now, Mary did, however, preach a sermon. Did you know that, brother? Mary preached a sermon, and it's in the Bible. And we're going to read that right now. In, in, look with me, if you will. In verse 5, and here's Mary's sermon. Verse 5 says, his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. That's it. That's Mary's sermon right there. Do whatever he tells you. If, if you ever want to look up a sermon, just look there. Chapter 2, John chapter 2, verse 5. Do whatever he tells you. Mary's sermon to them was just obey him. Plain and simple, obey him. You want, you want counsel for Mary? You know what she's going to tell you? If she still live today, she'll tell you, do whatever my son tells you. Plain and simple. The Bible is full of testimonies, and this is Mary's testimony to us. On this day, Mary went out on a limb, trusting that her son would be able to take care of the situation of the problem. What was the problem? The problem was they ran out of wine. They ran out of wine. I mean, in... In today's day and age, when we think about it, especially in Christian circles, that shouldn't even be a problem because the way we look at it, we shouldn't even be drinking. We shouldn't even be drinking. Now, I can touch more on that later on. I don't want to get in trouble, right? So I'll stop talking about that here now. Um, but here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm going to say, that it was a big enough problem to where she had to go to her son. She had to go to her son and tell him to fix it. Now, did Mary know how Jesus was going to fix this? Did she know how her son was going to take care of it? She didn't know. She had no clue. All she knew was that her boy Jesus was special. That's all she knew. She'd raised him up until 30 years to that point of, the li- of his life, raised him, and she knew one thing, that Jesus was special. He was the only individual recorded in the history of humanity here in the Bible that did not sin. The Bible says that though he was tempted in all, in all manners just like we are, yet he was without sin. Jesus is the only sinless person that's ever walked the face of the earth, and she knew it. She had her front row seat to this fact, and she knew that there was something special about him. And so she went to him, son, they're out of wine. And then the way he answers her, the way he responds, woman, what does this have to do with me? Woman, what does this... If I answered my mom like that growing up, I would have had her handprint uh, on my cheek, right? And, my, and, and, and a footprint on my butt from where my dad would have kicked me also. Hey, listen, I try that with Minga still now and, you know, once in a while. Woman! And I get in trouble. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But the thing is, as we read this, we need to understand that in that day and age, in that culture, it was a term of endearment. It was, a, it was a, a, a words of affection, it's like once in a while, you can ask Minga. I'll call her Madrecita. You all know where Madrecita is, right? Madrecita? It's a mother. doesn't mean that she's my mother, but it's, those are words of affection I use with Minga. Madrecita, what do you want to do today? Madrecita, where do you want me to take you? You know, uh, amor, all these words of affection. And so when Jesus responded, woman, what does this have to do with me? He's not being rude. He's not being sinful. He's being affectionate. That's why I love, I mean, you can read whatever translation of Bible you like, but the one I like is the NIV. Because the NIV translates it as, dear woman, what does this have to do with me? You can, you can, you can just, just sense that affection that he has towards his mother. Dear woman, what does this have to do with me? And so, after he responds in that manner, 
She doesn't even bother answering him. She doesn't say, well, it's because, you know, your cousin, he ran out of wine. And it's embarrassing, you know, Jesus, if, if he doesn't have wine for the ent- Oh, by the way, weddings back in the day, back in those days, lasted a full week. Not one day. A full week. Imagínate, Brother Smiley, all the barbecue. <laughs> My goodness. A full week of celebrating, of partying. Can you imagine that? My goodness. Man, back in the days when I drank, I would smell the alcohol and I'd tip over. No, ahora imagínate, these people, saturated, just saturated. But they knew how to have fun, right? <laughs> Supposedly. Jesus, they ran out of wine. But Maricita, what does it have to do with me? You have to help them. You have to help them, you know? It kind of reminds me of Chris and Liz when, when there's something that needs to be done here in the church and Liz just volunteers, old Chris. Yeah, I viene Chris. Ay, Liz, why do you have to volunteer me? Because they need help. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> David Urbina, you get ready because you're, you're next. <laughs> hey, but, but just the beauty of the relationship between mother and son, you know? And, and so she tells them they ran out of wine. What does it have to do with me? She ignores them. She ignores him. She turns around and preaches her sermon. He tells the servants, you do whatever he tells you to do. And it's kind of like he's hooked. Jesus is hooked. His time has not yet come for him to start his ministry, but he's hooked. He had a timetable. He was, he was probably one of those individuals that did everything. He had to plan everything in advance and so forth. Uh, but, but all of that went up in smoke simply because the mother desired that he start right then and there. He was hooked. Okay. So he turns around and what does he tell him? You take those six jars. You take those six jars and you fill them all the way to the top. He said, fill them to the brim. You all remember that commercial? Fill it to the rim with brim, the coffee commercial. See? Anybody else? Man, oh man, every time I read that, I feel like having a cup of coffee. He said, fill those those jars with water all the way to the top. Okay, okay. Okay, y ahí van los siervos. There go the servants. They're filling the jars all the way to the top with water. And they're probably thinking, why do we need water? Why do we need water? I mean, we need wine. And this is an emergency. I mean, I don't know what he's going to do, but let's go ahead and do it. Because his mama said, listen to whatever he, wants, he tells us to do. They were obedient. They listened. Fill them all the way to the top. And then what did he tell them? He tell them, now take some water out from there. Take, take some of it and take it to, the, to the, the master of the banquet. The master of the banquet. What does that look like today? Like the, the, court, the, what is it, the wedding coordinator? I don't know what that looks like. But the master of the banquet, take it to him so he can taste it. And so he tastes what's supposed to be water, and it's actually turned into what? Into wine. And not just any old type of wine. It, the best wine out there. Uh, the best wine out there, apparently, I'm not a wine expert, but the best wine out there is the one that's been aged the most. Is that correct? Correct? Any wine experts here? Nayan Toma. All right. Nayan Toma. ¿Cómo la ve, Dr. Rodriguez? What do you think? Nayan Toma. Hey, listen, but, but that's what I've heard, that the, mo- the one that's been aged the most, that's the one that tastes. Tastes the best, right? And so apparently this was wine that tasted the best. So it must have been that type of wine that, man, this has been aged for ages. But it wasn't. He turned it into the best tasting wine out there. You know, Mary didn't know how he was going to do it. She just knew that he could do it. Mary knew this one thing about her son that we all need to know today. Jesus is the agent of change. Whatever your problem is, Whatever your struggle is, whatever you need changed in your life, if you're not releasing Jesus into your life, it's never going to change. It's never going to change. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is eternal. That is the testimony of Mary. That is the testimony she gave The the people before her, in John chapter 1, verse 1, uh, the author of of the Gospel of John, uh, John the Apostle, he writes, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He's given testimony, John the Apostle, that Jesus Christ was indeed Emmanuel, God with us. That's what he's saying. Go a little bit further and you find the testimony of John the Baptist. 
John the Baptist is baptizing with his disciples. All of a sudden, here comes Jesus Christ. And what does he say? Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He testified that Jesus is the one who can take away the one thing that separated us from God, and that is sin. Fast forward to Andrew. Andrew finds out, Andrew finds out that he indeed, indeed is the, 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 the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And what does he do? Andrew runs to his brother, Simon Peter. Simon, Simon, guess who we found? We found the Messiah. They all knew who the Messiah was back then. The anointed one, the one who would come and save them from persecution. They were waiting for the Messiah. The timing was perfect. And Andrew goes and tells his brother Simon Peter, we found him. Come and see him. Then later on, you see the testimony of Philip. Philip runs to Nathaniel. Now, Nathaniel is one of those guys that you, you, you kind of just don't approach straight on because he's one of those cynical type of guys. One of those guys that he's hard to convince. He, he's one of those type of people that today and age we label as being negative. Oh, man, this guy's always so negative. Why is he always so negative? Why can't he just believe? He goes up to him and tells him, hey, we found the one who Moses wrote about in the scriptures. Really? Where'd you find him? Well, he's come out of Nazareth. Really? What good can come out of Nazareth? That cynical side of him comes up. He, he doesn't believe. But Philip doesn't back down. Hey, this is my testimony. I'm going out on a limb for the Lord. He is the one who Moses wrote about. Philip went out on a limb for him. And then comes Mary. Mary went out on a limb for him. That's her testimony. Mary was willing to put everything on the line and say, hey, listen, you just do whatever he tells you to do. What's he going to tell us to do? I don't know. How is he going to fix the problem? I don't know. All I know is you just do whatever he tells you to do. That's her way of going out on the limb. That was her testimony. You all want to hear my testimony? You all ready to hear my testimony? What did I say earlier? I said, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Did I not say that? What does that mean? That means that the same Jesus who turn, turned water into wine is the same Jesus who is alive today and at work today in our lives if we would just but go out on a limb for him. Let me share my testimony with you. I had an individual approach me two weeks ago. He said, Manny, can I talk to you? I said, talk away. He said, I'm having problems at my home. You see, I'm living with my sister and her family, and I'm having issues there at the home, and I'm assuming that there's conflict between them. There's conflict. He says, no, 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 no conflict. We're fine. My family and I are fine. The thing is, I stay there all day by myself. He's disabled. He's a veteran. Two tours in Iraq. He stays there by himself all day. You tell me, Manny... Every single day, I hear things, I see things, and I get touched in that house. There is a presence, a presence in there that is not good. And every single day, I'm having issues, the same issue, day in and day out. Doorknobs get turned, doors get slammed, cabinet doors get opened and slammed. He hears kitchen key, uh, keys dropping on the kitchen counter. There's nobody there. Footsteps down the hallway. His doctor was there. His doctor was there giving him an examination because he's not allowed to drive. And as his doctor is examining him, they hear footsteps coming down the hallway. And she tells him, oh, there's somebody else in the house. And he responds, there's nobody else here. It's just you and I. Then who's walking? He says, ignore it. She heard it. Now, as he's telling me this, I believe what he's telling me because his sister and her two children had told us the same thing three, four months ago. Before he moved down. So I already knew there was stuff going on there. Right? So here's my testimony to you all. Guess what I did? Guess what I did? I went out on the limb for the Lord. I said, Mira, look, you want that taken care of? He said, yeah, I want it taken care of because I'm being terrorized. Let's take care of it. I said, now, first and foremost, I need a meeting with you and your two sisters. One, because one of them is the owner of the house. The other one is, uh, is uh, the one who's paying the bills there in the house. She's the head of the household. And he, he's just living with his sister. So we meet, and I open the Bible, and I start preaching the gospel to them, and at the end of it, I say, now, I'm going to be very clear. We don't do exorcisms. We don't do exorcisms. We do coronations. That's what we do. 
We come and we present the gospel message. And we ask you to receive Jesus as the king of your life, to plant him right in the middle of your life and your home, and he takes care of those spiritual, uh, what do you call it, uh, when someone get kicks, gets uh, kicked out? Evictions. He'll take care of that, not us. But all you need to do is open your heart and your life and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I went out on a limb. I did. And so we go back and forth. The two ladies finally say, ah, I'm just going to go buy some candles at the Basilica. Look, hijo David, I'm going to go buy some, some candles at the Basilica. I'm going to light them up. We'll be fine. The other one says, ah, George, don't bother me. Hasta le puso nombre. <laughs> she, she's even named him. She calls him George. She says, George, don't bother me. You know, uh, as long as he doesn't go extras on me, I'm fine. You do whatever you feel you need to do. She tells her brother. And so I turn and tell the brother, that's it. She gave you permission. Let's take care of this. He said, let's take care of it. Went outside. It's around 1030 at night on a Friday night. And he gave his life to the Lord. He gave his life to the Lord. And then I told him, with this being said, with what you just did, this problem is going to get taken care of. You're not going to hear or see or feel anything in that house anymore. I went out on a limb. I did. Hey, I could have looked real stupid. I could have. What if the following day he would have called me and said, hey, Manny, you're a liar. I, I should never have believed what you said because I'm still hearing, seeing things, and I'm still being touched. But I went out on a limb. And you don't think I doubted in my own heart? I doubt it. I'm human. You know what I said? I said, oh, Lord, please be there. Don't be like my cousin Mandy who said he'd be there. <laughs> Please be there. <laughs> Praise the Lord he was there. Praise the Lord he was there. That wasn't a Friday night. I'm talking to him on a Tuesday morning. And I asked him, what's the verdict? And he said, the verdict is nothing. Nothing's there anymore. Everything stopped. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hey, Listen. When he said that, oh my goodness, I almost did a victory lap around my car and it was moving people. <laughs> you know what that did to my faith? It even bumped it up even higher. You know, the Bible says that Jesus reveals himself, God reveals himself to us faith by faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. It said the just shall live by faith. It, because uh, the, the, gospel, the gospel, which is the power of salvation unto all who believe, it says that we live by faith, from faith to faith. In other words, God pulls back the veil even more and more. The deeper we draw into a relationship with him, the more he reveals himself to us. The more we go out on a limb for the Lord, the more he reveals, for, he reveals himself to us. The more we take chances with who God is, with who Jesus is, the more that these pages jump out and become life to us. I was able to see this firsthand. It's been over a week and still no activity there in that house. Praise the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? What does that tell you? What does that tell me? It tells me that this stuff is real. It tells me that this stuff that's found in here is real because all of us here struggle with unbelief. Do we not? We're all human. At the end of the day, don't you think I lie down sometimes in bed and ask myself, man, is this really true? Or am I just a salesman? Is that all I am? Am I just a salesman, a con artist? You know, there's doubt. Like the man who, uh, who took his son to the disciples and, and, and asked him to cast out a demon from his son, and they couldn't. So what did he do? He took him to the, to the master, and then he said, hey, could you cast out the demon? And the Lord replied, can I cast out the demon? He said, all things are possible for those who believe. And the man responded, I believe, but help my unbelief. And that's what unbelief is. That part of us that doubts whether God, tr God truly exists, whether this is real. That's what faith is, brothers and sisters. We walk by faith and not by sight, trusting in something that we can't see. But you know what? If we are faithful... If we do what God is telling us to do, if we heed the words of Mary in her one and only sermon, you do what he tells you to do. Until we do so, God will never be real in our lives. He never will be. 
Man, brothers, we can come to church, we can clap, sing, say glory to God, we can uh, uh, sing along with Pastor Ray, we can laugh at Pastor Parker's jokes, we can do all of this stuff, but if we never allow Jesus to become real in our lives, it's just a religious exercise in futility. That's all it is. That's all it is. You're going to go back to the same thing, your empty lives, and there's never going to be any real power in your life. You have to answer the call. Go out on a limb. What is Jesus asking you to do today? What's he asking you to do today? I'm sorry. Is he asking you to trust him, to take that initial step and to trust him? Is he asking you to surrender all that you have to him so that he may fill you? You know, when, 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 the, when, the, servants obeyed, when the servants obeyed the commands of Jesus, the Bible says in verse 11 that they believed they believed. What does it mean to believe? When one believes, one is filled with the glory of God. When Jesus fills us with his glory, that's what it means to believe. When unbelief is filtered out and we're filled with faith, that is the very glory and presence of God coming into us. Just like those water jars were transformed from water into wine and they were filled, we need to be filled as well. But it's up to you. You can sit where you are. You can continue doing religion week in and week out. Or you can decide today, today I'm going to go out on a limb for the Lord. And you know what? He will not leave you hanging. That is my testimony. I'm not trying to sell you anything. That's the conclusion, by the way, that I came up with. When I ask myself, am I just a salesman, a con artist? I'm not a salesman. I'm not a con artist. I don't need anything. All I need is Jesus Christ in my life. That's all I need. I have learned to be content in any and all things, and I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. That's all I need. Jesus in my life. That's all you need. But will you let him? Will you trust in him? Will you surrender all to him? This morning, I'm going to ask you all to stand once again. I'm going to ask you all to stand and respond to the call of God in your life. Is Jesus calling you by name right now? You know what? He probably is. Stop doing religion. Stop trying to fool people because God can see right through us. That which is done in secret shall be revealed on the rooftops. Let's get real with God this morning. Let's get real with God this morning. What does God want to do in your life? He wants to start out by, by having you trust him. Will you trust in the Lord this morning? Will you, number one, trust him with your eternal security? Will you put all your faith and trust in him to save you? Will you trust in him to lead you, guide you, direct you, correct you in your life? Will you trust him with your family, with your marriage? Will you trust him with your jobs, with your relationships, whatever it is? Will you trust him? And if the answer is yes, glory to God. Because today is the day of salvation. I'm going to invite you to come forth, those that didn't come forth. And you know God is calling you. Stop putting it off this morning. Go out on a limb because he's not going to leave you hanging.